Sache darin. Kontras komo. Morne gege. Ich morne khri. Ages hürchef füll khri gut. Still cry. Like uh, it's hard to believe. But we were, we were so close. Henry and I would probably be the two closest brothers of the lot. It was like a wrenching of part of our lives. Not just a brother, but your best friend as well was gone, like you know. Joe Corgan, with the minutes of actual time and the clock to go, prepares for this free. Gosh gear the head and the common look has gail about John Morley. Agus vuig sé an shrá náisiún te pele le muio in the edrech seachtó. Long one from Joe Corcoran, and it's a goal, John Morley. Then a cordially, agus the anamor er er maahar, agus la wan vi meig chacht a walia, agus nor a hanet meig a gian chacht bian squad car an chin, agus tú sham an 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 rodeig an mi cart an shaw, ag ní rau. Be John, I guess Maher is just a, a, a car. I guess he did conch for Gotrod. I guess um, ah, then especially to John. John Marley is there for Mayo. The referee running. Come from a huge shamach. In Ganzi Mayo, but hot Jean and Kedla. Mayo is smeared. I guess I know. Marhele no jacko in Egi Gorda. Er en kar nu er hulgas. Färjug. Goes on to John Morley from Mayo. John, 60 yards from his own goal now. As he matured, he became an outstanding centre halfback for Mayo. It's caught there by a Mayo man who's John Morley. John, a left footer kick out towards Joe Parker. That affinity and affection and friendship was there because of the the football, uh, because of the rivalry, and because of his. The fact that he was stationed in the area and would would uh, be available to so many people. Todd Lewis Angle clown Henry Byrne le knockvere er fagnim lente. Vi shana her Henry Byrne Dominic er rinne den kuiger deg er ef tyrvacha den weiden vere in ochtig shachtoni. Das kal her Henry an chet shapochine kan e knockvere ags nier vader ker han ignis mo shapui da chid Byrne er involved. He was an exceptionally nice fellow, Henry was. You wouldn't kind of call him a, a typical guard by any manner of means. He was full of life, full of fun. Uh, he would light up the place wherever he went to work. When Henry would walk into a room, you were sure of a laugh, and everybody that knew him would say the same thing about him. And in the past, what, he's dead 26 years, and any of us that reminisce about Henry, you would never be ever hear of a sad incident that you'd be talking with Henry. It was always he did this and the fund was there and like and the crack that he would be involved in and the schemes that he would do and things like that. But a uh, very loving fella, absolutely a loving fella. So he was. I was working in the pharmacy, heard a bit of commotion, went to the door to look out, and what I saw was, I was just across here at the door, there was a man standing there with a balaclava and uh, a shotgun cradled in his arm. I was sitting up, I suppose it had been near the window in the bank, and when I heard the roar, I looked up and somebody fired a shot into the ceiling of the bank. He shot into the number one cash here. Everybody down on the floor, this is an armed raid, and uh, I duly dropped the phone and uh, just lay on the floor. Cui gan garda Brendan Gilmore agus kolaki ilesh kun robail an vainc a isro. We kept going on down towards the bank and suddenly this man, tall man, with a balaclava arrived at my side of the side of the door of the patrol car and he pulled me out on the street. Now my understanding in this, he held a gun to my, the back of my neck over that particular period. He asked for the manager. I said I was in charge. He said, open this and pointed towards the safe. 
went in and said, Jim, where's the key? And I was so scared at the time I couldn't even uh, respond. But uh, luckily the, the key was found and uh, they proceeded to go into the safe. He gave me a, one of these black rubbish bags and he told me to fill it. While I was filling it, he said to me, it's better to lose the money than have somebody shot or killed. Just as the, the two raiders were vacating the, the branch, somebody was got a notion that uh, they might alert the public. So they, they got a very heavy ashtray off the counter and fired it at the window. I heard a bang, glass breaking. And uh, I crouched down immediately. And then I heard a shot. And uh, I stayed down. And then I heard somebody shouting, uh, it's all clear. They ran out of the, the bank hopped into the car, drove up to the top of the town, at which moment everybody was out on the street watching this. It was like, and believe, suddenly there was nobody, suddenly there's everybody. They got to the top of the street, and then they turned and came back down again. The guns out the window, just driving down the street, and people were running back in again. The car in Balahadreen was a white car. And that information I would have given to Castle Ree that they were in a white car. And on the way over to Shannon's Cross, they swapped cars on, that, on the back road to a blue car. And when the Gardaí would have turned around the corner, they wouldn't have been aware that it was a, a, a blue car. Even guard the Henry Byrne Lorch. They crashed into us and uh, they fired on the car while we were in it. Do you have any idea how many shots were fired? Uh, quite a number, I couldn't say exactly. Could John Morley's the Tor Erna Gunadori? Squeed away, Agus Hitche Liga Gatalo. Agus John Morley and Mylon Vosh, Vina Robale, Kortumo Ele Ele, Tishkang Lushtan Fein of Ars Faris. Dudik Shit Fekel Michael Nisi, Faro Tool, Egor Eva Vok Tom, or Fashion Erige. My father put up a scuffle with them. He said, You're not getting the car, he said. And I said then eventually, I said, It's better give them the car if they want to so. Gad Marley was wounded anyhow, my father went down anyhow to him. I saw Gail Molly was badly injured and looked pale. I told him to make an extra condition or that he'd say like for him. I took his hand in mine and I said an extra condition for him. But I said, don't think that's going to... I, I'm hurrying you off or anything like that, but as a precaution, better than that. But I stayed around then until the car came and took him away. He wasn't, he seems to be getting weaker all right in that. The car came and we had to put him into it. Two men I didn't know. Honigan Muntor Autul, Eddie O'Reilly, Augustine Daskalori, Owen Madden, Aaron Lawhard. I saw John Morley in the ditch. Um, he had clearly been pursuing the, the bank robbers because he had a, a gun uh, with him. He was in plain clothes. Uh, he was in the ditch lying and he was obviously injured. He was alive because he didn't say anything, but it was obvious that he, he was alive. And uh, we managed somehow to get him into the back of the car and uh, we made our way to Roscommon at a, very, you know, going very fast. I kept checking with Owen as I was going along, was he still alive? And at one stage, Owen says, I think he's, he's going. I was kneeling on the front seat, holding his hands. <clears throat> and he kept saying, keep talking to him. And I remember John's eyes were focused on me for, for a while. I, I can't tell you how long. I drove to Roscommon General Hospital and uh, they were waiting for me at the casualty section and they took John in and unfortunately they pronounced him dead. The teacher, Mr. Hohid, said that the murders of the two Garda officers while carrying out their duty would be condemned by every right-thinking person in the community. And he promised that no effort would be spared to bring the perpetrators to justice. Agus, <laughs> 
Lower and she in a close on active contrition. Torche Shin Galera and Radio, August Hudeme, Marshin. I was sitting in my office, I have a bit of an office above in the shop. And I was already after getting false teeth. <laughs> and they were hurting me. I was on the phone to the dentist, telling him, complaining that I want to go back to him to make an appointment that my teeth are hurting. And my sister ran upstairs and said, Bernie, and she was roaring. She said, Henry is after being shot dead. I couldn't believe it. People retired, people went indoors. People stopped talking, uh, just withdrew into themselves. I remember the... Uh, press arrived that evening, and I, even no more than anybody else, wouldn't talk. Just, it's funny how people close up. It was like a whole family had been bereaved. The Taoiseach and the Minister for Justice were at Roscommon County Hospital as Gartha Morley's remains were removed to St. Patrick's Church in Castle Ree. The attendants included the Gartha Commissioner and other senior officers. Fifty uniform Gartha provided a guard of honour as the cortege moved off. I remember coming from Roscommon Hospital and we're coming out on the cortege and it's this little church, it's called Fuerty, or Fuerty it is. I, I, I remember, and for years afterwards I would cry when I'd pass by that church, the, the parish priest, and there was about 20 women on the side of the road saying the rosary when we were passing by. And I thought, God, that's so moving. And then coming through Castle Ree and Ballinlach and Ballyhonas and all the black flags hanging out over the, all the windows and like in the shops in Ballyhonas and, and, and Castle Ree and coming into knock here then, and the crowds of people that met us like. I remember when the, the cartage was passing here, my father was sitting at the door next door, because he lived there in a wheelchair shortly before he died. And I thought that was very sad to see his son kind of going off in the in front of him in the coffin. I'd say one of the one of the readings in the basilica, and I was looking down over the cafe and then I'm biting my tongue. You're not going to cry. You can't let the family down. You're not going to cry at this like and on. And saying saying that prayer, I had like and my heart broken at the same time. It wasn't it wasn't an easy thing to do. I can remember all the guards. I can remember the, the sort of the cortege as it left the basilica itself, and walking up and just people, thousands, what seems like thousands of people each side of it. I can remember walking up to the grave itself. Uh, I can remember the coffin being beside the grave, that coffin being beside the grave, and I can actually remember them lowering into the grave. Because I was like a child, you know, I've had a few funerals before that. I can remember all the, the, the big hole in the ground and that sort of stuff, and I can remember all that. Vi tror fær kontortoche le gunni en isch eg mach le skod. Horling sus le ochsgeb gorde trupi ags blachtri er chantre nier huskert. Dun of bohori ags hosigun din chelig. Turish gier gor fachas gunnador e malachlun fada. Nur a district na gorde en schgel hans der er ar in a hi er vala os kortach biog. Vi fil er elene ags an chum er goresha gorte. Kurshe hein in a hen na mar kolomoshe. They set the wall in front of the house and he kept he kept moving about and then a few minutes later she came in to the door, my grandfather answered and he said, I've got a little problem and my grandfather said, uh, what happened? He said, I'm shot. 
Lorna Vorg, Conagorde, via checkpoint in Nungar, Farref, Kuma, Kate Gibbelacher, a great Idrushan Garoste, Huigan Gorda Satorer, by on Farivian, not Patrick McCann, Truck a Caherblian Dish, a Stungar Vaughan, a Bortorge. Nila and Yixin, Rinanagordi Fisru Erhak, a Garnagalive, Honother or Peter Pringle, Iskra, a Vidatsa Doblian Dish of Laclia. The special brands men just came in. We didn't know what was going on, really. And they just went down, and a few months later, the man came out, clean shaven, very neat, very respectable looking. It must be remembered that the uh, three accused were not charged with the murder of Sergeant Marley. This was a decision taken by the prosecuting authorities, uh, I think because uh, they may have taken the view that uh, Sergeant Marley was in civilian clothes, he was also armed, whereas uh, Garda Byrne was in uniform, unarmed, obviously a member of the Garda Siakana. Everybody knows that the uniform Garda are unarmed, and it was decided that uh, the charge of capital murder should be brought in relation to Garda Byrne only. Vion Inishe Orenchach Harave Kinunach, Furus Ribe Gruiga Colomoshe Safor Cartina, Agus V Smidrini Paint on Rushton, Fighter in Afoka. He left uh, a footprint, at least one footprint, on top of the counter. Now, this became a crucial piece of evidence because it was found that the footprint matched the diamond pattern on the sole of O'Shea's runners. Now, nowadays, I suppose it would be enough to, to uh, photograph the footprint and measure it and so forth and produce the photographs in court as evidence. But I clearly remember the Gardaí, they had sawn off the part of this lovely mahogany counter with a footprint on it and carried it into court and produced it as a piece of evidence. For us, Lurg broke Patrick McCann in our the Lohar in Chur. We are the Canon Kena of the Lohar, fighting our Chur Brishti. Rinna Peter Pringle saw the Yacht in Rochus only in one, Rochus of the Anima of the Tukage, Darlish Nagardi. Agus if he marvelous a good finish in a chine. I know that you know I was involved, but on the advice of my solicitor, I am saying nothing. Erin fe shaktu la saun nejig ochto, for us kyanta kontrur, agus nirev af pianosa wan marvre, boss tre krocha. Nis deni, vile kontuchtran er hille, pian ver vosh and trur, agagachit karcha blien surfizun gan lawa. O Cod Vrodul Murhushach, the Francis Morley, Agus Ann Byrne. Manor Nadegoch the Do, Vrun and Tara Diliagus Kirt, Sean de Harty, Von Or Scott, Ernamana, in honor a good fear Kayla Kroga. A Goss Peter Pringle, V. Kursishkale, a Nadeg Nochel Kuig. Honig she can solish, go ref quivlin finishe, either bert or hard im screwdhe, rod nor ardi of egan chiel and nejug ochto, and nish vi aurus rezunach, madalini hintu, agus ordi of atriel. In nejug nochu kuig, squeal of a mach pringle er bonny, agus eg fanacht er an atriel. Ach, near hogan start ein chos ele in a finne, agus kaikish in eekshin, curve a hintu er nevni. Nura Honig and Papa own Polo Dog, a Knuckfere in Edic Shachtonli, via Monsignor James Horn in a counter, Agsi de Comora Cade Blain or Hyref Knuckfere. On Blindar Gion, via Monsignor Horn a Lahar Reached, a Socrate John Morley, Ax Henry Byrne, on Hate Socrate Reeve, a Basilica Knuckfere. Hog and Monsignor James Horn, Curra Hundinier, Don Tishuk Charles Hohe, Seclertach. Agus Kirshia planned the whole group more trachtola was a whore. I made a speech after the dinner and I mentioned the airport and I mentioned our expectations. And Charles Jair High got up and he said, Well, you know, he said, I'm very sympathetic, he said, towards this project. He said, and uh, he said, Perhaps you're pushing an open door. And uh, I took that to mean that he was very sympathetic and that probably we would get. An airport. Jack Lynch across the way said, Well, no, Monsignor, be very careful. That's not a commitment. And I said, If it's not a commitment, Jack, I said, The best we have got yet, you know. 
And he always says that at the dad's funeral, maybe he thought that how oh, he was a bit soft-hearted at the time. He said he'd get, he'd get shrouded. But they said that's when the roots of Knock Hereford were started, like in, uh, in Knock Fisher days, the day the two lads were buried in Knock. So, uh, so it's a nice kind of a touch, like, you know, that <laughs> the Vern family would have with, with Hereford as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Och the Lee and the Ugs Fehe Arike, Kadbuhush Leshen Robal, Ugs and Maru. It's very difficult to know. They themselves uh, never said. Uh, perhaps uh, it was a Mayfian job. The amount of money wasn't that big. Uh, perhaps they were thinking of setting up, so, up some sort of left wing or radical organization. Nobody knows. <laughs> Come horrid to win a Vincent Genu Sherivish to Fobble in a ward of Shirhana. Nor a gentle fanner shin. Shen Fockle cart, a Santanum cart, but cart a horrid. Gor Tak Marfe. Augustame Dorir of Fushin in St. Giel Umblon than Ockle Shin. He was a very, a very special man who made an impact in Balladrine, in Roscommon Town, in Castlery, and in the whole area, and in, in Ireland as a footballer. And he, he went out and did his duty, as he was required to do as a member of the Garda Shikana, and was prepared to, to lay down his life as he did. And um, I think because of the affection with which he was held as a footballer, as a human being, as someone who did his duty, not just as a guard, but for the community as an individual. He won't be forgotten. If he had lived, I don't think his personality that would have changed. We, I, we often thought about it. Like, you know, I still think he's the same carefree kind of a fellow that he always was. I could never imagine being kind of you know the austere guard that she you hear now in other guards, and that he'd be always light-hearted and. I don't know if he ever had that many summonses when he was a guard, either, really honest with it. Um, he would, cause it, it wasn't in his nature or his character. He was just, lads was out for life, loved his football, loved his family, and a bit of crack in them, and I don't think he would ever have any ambitions, no, Henry, of kind of reaching the, the top ranks of, uh, of the Galicia corner or anything like that. No, I wouldn't think so. You know, I would hate to have bear any animosity to anybody that, you know, because I think man did a super job bringing us up, like, thankfully, you know, that she brought us up to say this thing happened, you know, there's nothing we can do about it, uh, and we get on with our lives and that sort of stuff as best we can. Obviously, we're going to miss him. There, there are times you miss him big time and that sort of stuff. My dad didn't die in vain. Like, you know, I think that everyone recognises that he was doing his job to the best of his ability on that day, unfortunately, that something tragic did happen. 